All right, guys, uh, it is Saturday. This is my almond I'm eating. Saturday, August 20th, 2011. Well, what I wanted to do was re-record this one because I recorded one on August 4th, I think it was. I had an instrument lesson. So I recorded, like I always do, kind of do it in the morning when I'm heading to work or something like that. Or it used to be I'd head to the lesson and do it. Um, but didn't realize how bad the lesson was going to turn out. So I took this uh, friend of mine, his Canon Vixia. I mean, they're like that big, you know, and I've got the camera you're seeing right now with the extended bat or the extra battery on it. I mean, it's, it's pretty big and, and it's heavy too. So of course I've got the new mount here, so no problem anymore. But the old system, the mount was coming off or it would just fall down and it did it during the lesson. So, um, Aside from the mount coming off and unsticking from the window, and that was my sticky pod. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, so, oh well, whatever. I've got um, rolling shutter, I think that's what it's called. If you guys see the video, which I'm going to show it anyway. I almost scrapped it, but I mean, shoot, I paid for an hour and a half of flight time. I might as well just put the lesson up. But I'm putting a picture in picture. I had this camera you're seeing, I had it mounted kind of at an, I could only get it at an angle mounted that it was straight on the um, instrument panel so you can kind of see what I'm doing so um, it's it's at a bad angle and the Sun was kind of shining in, and of course it changes as you're flying the, the, the direction of the Sun so that was kind of weird but you get the picture so I wanted to kind of show you you know we were doing some climbs and descents at certain air speeds some comp uh, time turns uh, compass turns you're gonna see um, some sponsors that I'm going to be talking about and I've tried to pick people that are really useful and try to make it um, as, as, less, as, as the least intrusive as I can. Got a couple banners on the website right now on, on studentpilotjournal.com, uh, crazedpilot.com, that's the first one I want to introduce and uh, it's just a, um, it's a, a, you know, aircraft supply store as far as, uh, you know, flight bags and um, there's some headphone accessories and good guys over there. I've talked to those guys a lot, so I'm happy to have those the, their banner on the website. And then the uh, obvious one is Four Flight. Four Flight. I've always talked about them. I've been a big uh, fan of them, and uh, most people, most pilots out there, are. They're very popular. It's a very very useful um, pre-flight app, um, and uh, of course, flying in-flight app. It's very helpful too. But the GPS is a little unreliable on the I, iPhone. iPhone, that's good. On the iPhone and iPad, uh, but they do have external GPS that you can plug in there and you can buy, and that makes it a little more reliable. Um, but yeah, it, it, I can't say enough about those those guys. But what's very important that if you're going to go and you want to support the podcast, that you go to my website www.studentpilotjournal.com and you click and if you want to go to Craze Pilot and buy some stuff that you actually click on that banner ad because it is it is tied to my website and it will let him know when when you've uh, clicked from my website with four fight you go to the website my website and you click on the banner and when it, it's going to take you to their web page and it's going to have a button that says purchase you're going to purchase your new subscription there it's I think it's $24.95 for three months super deal I mean look at it as you know what is it eight bucks a month for eight bucks a month, you're getting a host of features. You're getting, you know, maps. You're getting METARS, TAFs, um, uh, VFR sectionals. You're getting um, the AFD. Anyway, very useful app. So check out crazepilot.com from my website. Click on the banner app. And Four Flight from my website.
Cessna Tower, Cessna 183, Sierra Papa is ready at 5. Cessna 183, Sierra Papa, Melbourne Tower, right turn out, runway 5, cliff takeoff, wind uh, 1507. Alright, cliff takeoff and right turn out, 3 Sierra Papa. Alright, let's try a couple uh, changes of airspeed. Okay. Uh, heading 220, 2500, slow to 70 knots. Let's make a left turn to a 150 heading. Here, clear to the left. 150. Smooth, man, smooth. <laughs> that was good. Don't forget the uh, rudder coordination in those turns. Let's descend to uh, 2,200 and descend at 70 knots. I should see more solar panels. All right, give me a uh, climb to 2,500 and uh, you can climb at whatever airspeed you want, but just a uh, 300 foot per minute climb. Okay. Holding uh, one five Bravo zero heading. Bravo 7 0 2 Bravo are being Ford Pierce, four miles offshore, southeast bound, leaving 3,500 up to 4.5 Bravo North. Bravo North 7 0 getting out of 2 4 for Papa's crash line, two and a half miles offshore. Three miles off of the mooring, northbound, coming turn, south north. Good. Don't forget as you uh, as you add power and pitch the nose up, you're gonna need right rudder. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we're a little to the left of our of our heading. It was kind of keeps going going over there, yeah, without the without the rudder input. All right, that all looks pretty good though. Um, all right, let's try a couple couple of uh, time turns. Uh, so a standard rate turn is three degrees per second. Oh, got it. Yeah. So a, uh, and of course, you know what a standard rate turn looks like on that turn coordinator? Right, with the, uh, there you go. And I've found out through other instrument lessons that it's actually, if you put the, put the wing on like the bottom portion of that white bar, uh, if you put it in the middle or the upper portion of the white bar, you're not quite doing a standard rate turn. Okay. Um, it's a little bit miscalibrated. Um, so three degrees per second, so a 360 degree turn would be two minutes, 180 would be a minute. 90 degrees, 30 seconds, so on and so forth. Um, okay, so let's uh, okay. Let me grab an instrument cover real quick. Let me get a, uh, while I'm doing this, left turn to zero nine zero. Zero nine zero. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up the uh, directional gyro and you're gonna do a time turn for, uh, we'll try a 30 second turn to the right. Okay. So we should roll out on a 180 heading, right? Okay. Uh, okay, so your clock is running over there? Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cover the instrument and whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. At 1,300 feet, heading north down, climb to 2,000. We're doing a two minute? We're doing a 30 second turn. 30 second. We'd roll out on a south heading.
Okay. That's awesome. Ah, perfect. Nice. All right, let's try. Uh, let's try one to the left. We'll do a uh, full one minute. So okay. that'll, we should roll out on one heading. Okay. Uh, one minute would be rolling out on a north heading. There you go. All right. All right. All right. You said for a minute, right? One minute. That rain over there to the right, Jason? Yeah, I'm... Um, hold on, I got a shot going on here. Oh, okay. Looks like it. Not behind us now? No, 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 over, uh, like, right along the coast. Oh, okay. On the river, it's really pretty cool looking. I'll turn this back that way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Kinda cool. Yeah. I can get it now. I'm not sure if it's not beautiful for Papa Fort Pierce and uh over the shoreline turning left northbound, three thousand five hundred. Uh, cool. Not bad. Yeah, cool. Good. Good. Alright, so that's uh that's time turns. And um of course, we should have gone over this thing around. That's all right. Uh, I'll, I'll explain where that could be really helpful in a bit. Um, so I'm going to cover this back up, and now we're going to do some turns with just the uh, just the magnetic compass. Uh, are you familiar with the compass turning errors, dip errors? Uh, uh, I did review that. You're three and a half now. What's that? So I did not review that. Okay. Uh, I'll give you the. I'm trying to give you the really condensed version. Basically, um, uh, Compass has, in, in flight here, two major types of errors that, that we're going to see. One, one uh, is much more noticeable than the other, uh, is the Compass turning error. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, um, it, it, it's only prevalent on uh, when you're turning to or from northerly or southerly headings. Uh, so the first thing let's do is just try to make a right turn to an easterly heading. And the compass is, is going to indicate correctly, so let's just go to right to, uh, to an easterly heading. Um, and of course the, the compass indicates backwards from, from our point of view, right? Yeah. So you kind of, you're making the numbers slide down. Downhill. It's lagging. Is it lagging? Right now? Yeah, was my uh, north before? Uh, no, no. So, okay. so it, it, it's indicating backwards, right? You were like uh, 330, so you just turn toward, turns through north. Um, so when you're turning, easterly or westerly headings are just as they, as you see them. Turning easterly as I see them. Yeah, so just east, just roll out on east. Jason, did you get that? Oh, what? Uh, compass. I, I got a close-up of it, but it's kind of dark because it's so bad with it. Okay. All right, so okay, gotcha. That makes sense, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, and watch your watch your altitude sensor a little bit. So you've heard the you've heard of the acronym UNOS undershoot north overshoot south. Not not that acronym. Okay. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways you can you can remember it. Um, the way that makes the most sense to me is we're in the northern hemisphere in the compass likes to get to north, okay? So if you're turning to a northerly heading, the compass is gonna precede your turn. It's gonna be before your turn. You're gonna have to roll out, uh, roll out early. If you're turning to a southerly heading, the compass tries to stick on north, you know, likes, likes north, tries to stick on north. So you have to turn past the southerly heading. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, so you have to roll out past the heading. Correct. Two, spot number six. Okay, so let's make a, uh, we're on roughly a 090 heading. Let's make a right turn to just a heading of south. And what I want you to do is turn past 180, about uh, about 20 degrees, and then roll out. roll out 
out past it. Yep. Yeah. As you roll out, you'll see the compass swinging back. Oh, okay, cool. And anytime you're doing these compass turns, uh, especially in northerly or southerly headings, you have to kind of, once you, you know, once you roll out into level flight, give it three or four seconds for the compass to settle down. Uh, it's really easy to just glance at it, and the compass is still swinging, but you think you're off of your, uh, of your target heading. Okay. Okay, so, um, the, the amount that you need to roll in, or excuse me, uh, precede or, or go past the heading depends on how much you're turning. Uh, it's it's going to be a maximum of about 20. It depends on a couple things, actually, but it's going to be a maximum of about 20 degrees. Uh, let's make a uh, left turn to a north heading. But this time you're going to roll out early, early. right? Okay. It's about 20 degrees early. Um, Oops. So if you're uh, if you're shooting if you're shooting an instrument approach like say you're shooting one to Melbourne, uh, it's either really an east easterly or westerly heading. That's pretty easy, right? Because the compass doesn't have turning errors on easterly or westerly headings. If you're shooting like say the ILS 36 in Titusville, um, it can be pretty difficult with the compass, uh, right? Because I mean you just make a small turn and the compass is swinging way back and forth. Um, so what can be useful is let's say you're trying to turn from a, a heading of uh, 360 to maybe like a left turn to 350. So three degrees per second standard rate, it's about a three second turn for 10 degrees, right? Um, 20 degrees, 60 or six, or six or seven seconds. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, so when, you're, when you're using the compass and just trying to make small, small turns, uh, it can be useful to, to just time, even you know, if you're just counting like in your head, especially for those 10 or 20 degree uh, degree turns. So we're on about a, what would you say, 350? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Can you, can you see it? Huh? Oh, oh, no, ahead, no, 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 yeah. yes, I got you, 350. 350. Okay, so <laughs> let's just try a, uh, just a right turn to three, uh, actually, just make it zero one zero. So just just count. Just go standard rate, roll in, and then just count six or seven seconds. AC makes it sound hard. Do I? Casey makes it sound difficult. Uh, really? Whoa. Sound difficult? Well, way too far. A lot to remember. Ah, a lot to remember. Yeah, okay. Three degrees per second, so for turning. Yeah, I right. went way far. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I know. I'm try, I'm gonna try I, looked out, I looked out the window. <laughs> okay. So, wait till you're stable and see where you're, see where you're at. One thing to have is, you know, the compass is very uh, sensitive to things like uh, rudder input or just, you know, especially on northerly or southerly heading, just a little bang and it's, it's swinging. So uh, just try to maintain perfect level flight and then look up and see where the compass stops. So we're about on <coughs> 015. Yeah, 010. Okay. okay, so where do I want to go? So uh, we're on. I think about zero one five. Let's make a left turn to uh, three five five. So oh, what is that? Uh, oh, seven seconds to the left. Fairly close. Huh? That's fairly close. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh, give me a left turn to uh, two four zero now. Oh, you're really gonna practice this. <laughs> and uh, these are really good to practice on the simulator. I too. know. Yeah. It, it actually it does a really good job. Good. All right. <laughs> uh, it's funny. 
you need to uh, practice on the simulation <laughs> so that you don't waste your money. <laughs> well, I hope you guys uh, enjoy that one despite the horrible camera shake. But um, even even beyond that, I was able to uh, to get some useful things out of that by listening to it again, which is my purpose was my main purpose a long time ago for recording these was to full review. Uh, with instrument stuff, it really helps, and this is the tip I got for you, so don't press stop yet. What you can do, if you have a flight simulator, uh, instrument flying and flight simulators really come in handy. Uh, home flight simulators, whatever you want, or if your flight, you know, flight school has a simulator flying. What I did is I took the episode, put it on my iPhone, uh, just the audio, really, that's all I cared about, and if, you, uh, if you're asking, well, how do I do any of that, episode 24, go and download that one, that shows just how I capture all the audio, the equipment that I need, the video, how I capture that as well, uh, so go check that out, but beyond that, what I wanted to do was simulate my entire instrument lesson and see if it actually worked and see if I could actually follow along with it, put my headphones on and just simulate my whole entire flight. So what I did was I popped up X-Plane, which is my favorite simulator, popped it up, um, put in Melbourne for the starting airport, runway 5, um, press play on my iPhone, and as we were taking off, I was taking off on the sim, I guess probably about 20 minutes of, of uh, lesson. So, you know, we did our climbs and descents, we did our time turns, we did our compass turns. Um, this time, because I don't know if anybody's like uh, me, but when you're taking your lesson, you're trying to fly, you're trying to do everything, and he's on to the next topic, and eventually it just kind of sets in because you do it enough, but especially if it's like a new topic and you're trying to fly, it's very hard for you to stay up, and at least for me it was. So, you know, he would say, um, you know, he'd explain something, and like, uh, well, did that make sense? And I'd go... Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I'm already on the, I'm on the thing he just talked about a minute ago. I'm still trying to think about what I'm doing instead of just, you know, blindly flying, no pun intended. Um, so, anyway, so we did that. I did that in the simulator yesterday. It took me like 20 minutes, like I was saying. And what we did on the lesson was we took off from Melbourne, and then as we were finishing up, we needed to get fuel. So we went to Valkyria, which is the other airport that I, I trained out of, um, it's about 10 or so miles uh, south, so we turned uh, to the west, so you'll, I don't know if I kept it in the video, but 270 was what he pointed me to, and then I was, he had me, he led me into the downwind of runway 14 in Valkyria, so the really neat thing was, is when I finished on the simulator, and he turned me to 270, and I turned, I pointed the nose down because I hadn't been looking on the outside. I'd just been focusing like I was, you know, under the hood. Once I pointed the nose down, I was pointed straight in the same place that I was on the video. Really scary. Now, I was a little closer, but that's pretty impressive for uh, for doing something. So if you're uh, training and you're doing instrument training, I mean, maybe you could do it in your uh, private pilot. I, I, don't, I don't know, but the problem with that is, is you're doing, you know, you're doing a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, techniques, kind of, you know, short soft field, takeoffs, landings, stuff like that. So some of that stuff may not work well, but you definitely do some instrument things in private pilot, so you can at least try that. So there's my tip. Don't forget about the sponsors. Don't forget about grazepilot.com forward slash SPJ, or you can just go to my uh, website, www.studentpilotjournal.com click on the link for Craze Pilot, get some gear. Uh, also, for flight, uh, best, instead of me giving you the URL to click, because you can't click it here, just go to my website. Make sure you click on that banner if you want to purchase or renew a subscription. So that'll really help, help me out, and we'll also show them how well podcasting can be for advertising for their, uh, uh, for their business. So, anyway, uh, Twitter, at SPJGreg, Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash SPJ podcast. That's all I got for you. I'll see you later.